Um, I simply look at, at the future and say, what is the thing that will actually work? Um, it, and using a non-renewable resource, um, obviously, will not work. So we must find an alternative. But if, if, I, if, if there was a button I could press to stop all hydrocarbon usage today, I would not press it. You would not press of it? Of course not. Okay. Did you expect him to say that? <laughs> you would not press it, would, it, it because... It would cause human civilization to come to a halt. Every hospital would have to close that. That would be ridiculous. And... So it would be irresponsible to press that button. Um, but w w what does need to happen is to, if we can, accelerate the transition towards renewables. That's the sensible thing to do. Um, and, um, you know, if you take, a, say, I'm going to use maybe two examples, uh, Saudi Arabia, since the Saudi Aramco uh, president spoke here. The, uh, Saudi Arabia has an enormous amount of sunlight, and that, that, that will be there for billions of years, or well, at least one billion years until the sun eventually engulfs us, but a billion years, solid. <laughs> Um, bit more maths there. <laughs> You've got a solid, solid billion years there. So it, it seems that um, you know, in, investing in the, the, the solar resource is the thing that, that's really going to preserve the, the long-term future, not, not so much the oil and gas. I mean, that's, that's a temporary thing. In, in the future, we'll look back, and by future, I'm not talking about super far in the future, I'm talking about towards the end of the century. We will look back on gasoline-powered cars the same way we look back on coal, as sort of a quaint anachronism that's in a museum. But, but when I was in, in college, I thought about what, what are the areas that would most affect the future of humanity, in my opinion. Um, and the three areas were the internet, sustainable energy, and space exploration, particularly if humanity becomes a multi-planet species. You know, there's kind of like a pretty substantial bifurcation in our sort of future if we're either uh, out there among the stars on multiple planets, or if we're confined to Earth until some, obviously, eventual extinction event. Yeah. Um, not that I'm pessimistic about life on Earth. I mean, I think some things are likely to be good. But even more likely to be good yeah. by far. Yellowstone's due for an explosion every hundred, several right, hundred exactly. thousand. Right, exactly. knows about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seven hundred thousand years. Every seven years. It's been seven hundred thousand since. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Super I mean, volcano. For those of you who don't know, it would envelop the well. Sorry. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we read I mean, the same books, I can right, tell. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, something bad is, is bound to happen if you give, if you give it enough time. Um, and civilization has been around for such a very short period of time that um, you know, th these, these timescales seem like very long, but on an evolutionary timescale, they're very short. Yeah. Um, you know, a million years on evolutionary timescale is, is really not much. Um, and you know, it's been around for four and a half billion years. Yeah. So. That's you know a very tiny, tiny amount of time, really. But for us, that would be. I mean, can you imagine if if uh, human civilization continued at anything remotely like the current pace of technology advancement for a million years? Where would we be? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think we're either extinct or on a lot of planets. Yes, <laughs> we should. <laughs> it's very important to like the people you work with. Otherwise, life, you know, your job is going to be quite miserable. Um, and in fact, we have a um, <coughs> a strict no assholes policy at at, at SpaceX. And we fire people if they're, I mean, we give them a little bit of warning, but if they continue to be an asshole, then they're fired. Uh, Biden's chief scientist, Andrew Lim, uh, recently said during an interview uh, that worrying about the dark side of um, artificial intelligence is like worrying about overpopulation on Mars. How would you address that? He, he said it, it's, it's a distraction to the, the, the scientists being artificial intelligence. I, th I, don't think, I think that's... Uh, sort of radically inaccurate analogies. The, um, <laughs> I, know, I know a bit about Mars. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the, the risks uh, with uh, sort of digital superintelligence, and, and it's important to appreciate that it, would be, it wouldn't be just human level, it would be superhuman almost to the end. It would, it would just survive past humans to be way, way beyond uh, anything we can really uh, imagine. I think the more pro analogy would be like uh, if you if you instead of saying nuclear research with the potential for a very very dangerous weapon, you, um, you know, releasing the energy uh, is easy. Um, uh, containing that energy safely is very difficult. And so the the right I think the right emphasis for AI research is on AI safety. We should uh, put vastly more effort into AI safety, then we should put into advancing AI in the first place. Uh, because it, it may be good or it may be bad. And it, it could be catastrophically bad. 
uh, that could be the equivalent of uh, nuclear meltdown. So you really want to emphasize safety. Uh, so I'm not saying I'm not against the advancement of AI. This is, I want to really be clear about this. But I, I do think uh, we should be extremely careful. And if that means it takes a bit longer to develop AI, then I think that's that's the right trail. Um, we shouldn't be rushing headlong into something that we don't understand. Uh, Bill, I know you share similar views with Elon, but is there any difference between you and him? I don't think so. Uh, okay. I mean, he actually uh, put some money out to help get some more coin on this, and uh, I think that is absolutely fantastic. You know, for people in the audience who want to read about this, I highly recommend this Boston book called Super Intelligence. And, but the basic point that Elon just made that we have a general purpose learning algorithm that evolution has endowed us with. And it's running in an extremely slow computer. Uh, very limited memory size, uh, ability to send data to other computers. We have to use this funny mouth thing here. Uh, and but whenever, it's also we, whenever we build very a new one that starts efficient. over, it doesn't know how to walk. It's a really long um, root process. Uh, it, yeah. So, Believe me, as soon as this algorithm of uh, taking experience and turning it into knowledge, which is so amazing and of course we have not done in, in software, as soon as you do that, it's not clear you'll even, even know when you're just at the human level. You'll be at this superhuman level almost as soon as that algorithm is implanted in silicon. And you know, actually, as time goes by, that silicon piece is getting ready to be implanted. The amount of knowledge, as soon as it has that learning algorithm, it just goes out on the internet and reads all the magazines and books and things like that. We have essentially been, been building the content base for the superintelligence. You think you're using the internet? That's actually what you're you're doing. So, uh, you know, I try not to get too exercised about this, but when people say it's not a problem, that really then I can start to get really, uh, uh, in a point of disagreement, how can they not see what a, a, a huge challenge this is? Um, and um, you know, it's worth noting, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but it, it, the world could be powered many times over by solar if you had enough uh, battery capacity to pair it with it. M many times. like. The world? I mean, Probably obviously California, where you're no. based, but in Europe? Times Can you really say that in Europe? A thousand. <laughs> it's literally true. The, the amount of energy that, that reaches the Earth from the sun is staggeringly high. We have this enormous fusion generator in the sky uh, that, that is lobbing out vast amounts of energy. And I'm, I'm talking about just using land area. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. In fact, here's a little tidbit. Um, if you take a nuclear plant and you took its current output and compared that to just taking solar panels and putting solar panels on the, la on the area used by the nuclear power plant. Because these typically have a big keep out zone, you know, about maybe five kilometers or there thereabouts, it, where, where building houses, you know, and, and dense, uh, you know, any kind of dense uh, office or, or housing space, usually people don't want to do that near a nu nuclear power plant. <laughs> um, uh, so. There's, there's quite a big keep out zone, and when you factor the keep out zone into, into account, um, the solar panels put on that area will typically generate more power than the nuclear power plant. Man, I never thought I was someone who could ever uh, be capable of a nervous breakdown, um, and, but I, I felt this was the closest I've ever come, because um, it, it seemed pretty, pretty dark. T minus 30 seconds, mark. Toward the end of 2008, SpaceX prepared its fourth attempt. We were running on fumes at that point. We had virtually no money. So a fourth failure... A fourth failure would have been absolutely game over. Done. Done. SpaceX bankrupt. Yeah, it's, it's bad enough to have three strikes. Having four strikes, <laughs> it's really kaput. <laughs> but flight four was flawless. In Musk's world, it lit the darkness. Then, as often, the week of Christmas became a time when little boy dreams are answered.
NASA called and told us that we'd won a one and a half billion dollar contract. And I couldn't even hold the phone. It's like, I just, I just blurted out, I love you guys. <laughs> they saved you. Yeah, they did. Financially and maybe even emotionally. I'll tell you what, that was, a, that was definitely helpful. <laughs> yeah. Two days later, on Christmas Eve, Tesla's investors decided to pour in more money. So you were saved in the period of three days yeah. by two completely unexpected events. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. That's for sure. A lift off of the Falcon 9. The rockets haven't failed since. His cargo capsule has docked three times with the space station. Capture is confirmed. And in the California plant, they're fitting seats for what they hope will be eventual manned missions. SpaceX is also testing a rocket that can be reused, softly landing on a column of flame. Another step on a longer journey. Well, as far as climate change skeptic, I mean, like, I'm, you know, I, I like to, I believe in the scientific method, and one should be, one should have a healthy skepticism of things in general, and, you know, as, if, if you first things from a scientific standpoint, you always look at things probabilistically, not definitively, and so I think a lot, a lot of times, if, if somebody's a skeptic in the science community, what they're really saying is that they're not sure that it's 100% certain that, right. that this is the case, but that's, that's, that's not the point. The point is, um, that is, 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 is to look at from the other side. See, what, what do you think the percentage chance is of, of this being catastrophic for some meaningful percentage of the Earth's population? Um, is it greater than 1%? Is it even 1%? Um, if it is even 1%, why are we running this experiment? Right, because you called it a Russian roulette. We're playing Russian roulette with the atmosphere. We're playing Russian roulette, and, then, and, and as each year goes by, we're loading more rounds in the chamber. Not, it's not wise. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's and, and and what makes it super insane is that we're going to run out of oil anyway. <laughs> like it's not like there's some infinite oil supply. We're going to run out of it. So we know we have to get to a sustainable means of, of of transportation, no matter what. So why even run the experiment? Right. It's the world's dumbest experiment. It's like computers, <laughs> um, and, uh, and I, I, yeah, I didn't expect to create numbers or anything like that. So it's, it's really, and, and I, I think it's it, it is it is better to approach this from the standpoint of saying, um, if, 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 rather than like you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to make money, it's like what is some useful thing that you could do that you wish existed in the world, um, and then uh, try to get other people to work with you to create that thing and keep making it better and better. Um, and if you do create something useful, then money will be the result. Uh, but it's but that, that's just the way that the you know, properly working economy kind of rewards the creation of useful goods and services. Uh, and, and, uh, and, if, and if you create something you, that, that you love and you think other people love, it's, very, it's much easier to sort of sacrifice the time and spend the effort. And, um, and if it doesn't work out, you don't regret it. You know, Thank <laughs> you.